All right, guys. The attendance was 10,275. The game was 2.37 uh, million. Fight of the night was Aldo Edgar. The knockout of the night was Bigfoot Silva. And the submission of the night was Bobby Green. And each one of those guys won $50,000. So congratulations to them. Who's first? Captain. Thanks. Antonio, first question. I mean, obviously you had a lot of emotion the other day at the face-off, and, and certainly uh, today her being had trouble pulling you away when uh, when he was stopping the fight. Why were you so angry? What was it that Overeem did that made you so angry? Yeah, I mean, so angry because uh, he not respect me, you know, to talk a lot of bullshit and shit before the fight. You know, and uh, the fight, we just inside the cage, not outside. And now uh, when the, uh, the stop the fight, and uh, I'm very excited, you know, and uh, I just want to talk to him, hey, get up, I want to fight, fight hard, man. Come on, get up. Just this, I know, just that. And, and what happened, uh, you know, the first two rounds, you didn't have a lot of offense, you know, it seemed like, you know, you were neutralized, and then you were shot out of a cannon in the third round. Did the corner get on you, or did you just realize, hey, I need to, you know, change the way the fight goes? Yeah, uh, I walk a lot in, in the gym, and uh, I have a good strategy, you know, because uh, we know over him, I have a good cardio, and no hurt. He, him, when uh, he push. He's a lion, but when he, the guy punch him, he's a cat, you know? And, uh, I'm with the first round, the second round, I talk with his ear when he used his grand pound. Let's go, man, push hard. I confuse his mind, you know? And all the time when he's pushed, he, he prefers, man, this guy don't come for the final round. And uh, my corner say, hey, when you uh, use your right right push, he move the head. Use two times, one and uppercut, and I do that, and uh, I got it. Congratulations, thank you. Dana, two questions for you. Um, one about this fight. What what does that do to your heavyweight title picture now? Because it seems like you don't really have a clear uh, contender for the heavyweight title. Yeah, going into this fight, you know, we talked about uh, you know if Alistair over him one. You know, he and Alistar had just fought, I mean, he and uh, um, uh, Cain Velasquez had just fought recently. But I'm telling you, the way that he looked in this fight and what he did to, to Alistar, maybe we do this fight again. And you guys know I don't make fights as soon as right. the fight's over, but I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be opposed to that. And I just wonder if you can comment on the main event. Uh, obviously, the scoring, you know, was a little bit controversial again. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I had it uh, three to two for uh, for Aldo, one, two, three, and then four or five for Edgar. What did you think? And uh, you know, Frankie Edgar, like, can you comment on sort of? He seemed to be snake bit and always comes up short in these very close fights. Yeah. <clears throat> and not to mention the fact that he's like the Arturo Gotti of the sport. I mean, the first two rounds, you're like, there's no way that this kid's even going to be in this fight. And then. Mm -hmm. He starts to find his range in the third uh, round, starts to land, you know, th everything starts to turn. And, yeah, the, I, I agree with you that I think that the scoring was way off and it was, should have been a lot closer than that. Um, but it's all on how you judge that third round. <clears throat> but I do think all the one to fight. You know, I don't think it's so much controversy that you're going, oh, no, Frankie, I think Frankie won that. But you got you to love and respect that kid. I've got a question for you, Damien. Congratulations. Uh, the current talk around the uh, internet is that you outfitched John Fitch. I'm just curious if uh, how you feel about that, and you know if, if, what your strategy was going into it, and how you felt it played out tonight. Uh, the strategy was to do what I did, you know, go and, and try to to take him down, take his back. And unfortunately, I was not able to submit him because he's very tough to submit. I just realized when I got inside the cage and. I got his back, I said, okay, now, you know, let's try like I did my last, last, last fights, but just didn't work, and, uh, but the strategy, the, the, the A plan was that we had a B plan and A plan, the A plan, you know, is, was what I did, so I'm very happy because I won one of the toughest guys in the division, I, I, don't, I just remember him losing for GSP and to Johnny Hendricks, and I was able to control him. Of course, I always like to submit, 
uh, I am trained a lot more jiu-jitsu nowadays to submit the fights and give a, a good fight for the fans, but sometimes it's just impossible. Is there any sense of you wishing you had dropped to 170 earlier in your career? Yeah, I think that sometimes, but you know, you cannot go come back, uh, go back to the past, so I just think I have. And lastly, Dana, for you, just if you could comment on your strike force fighters tonight, they did very well. Yeah, I, I actually had, you know, I've been saying this a lot over the last couple of weeks, you know, uh, without getting into it, uh, you know, I, I felt bad about what's happened to those guys over there in the last year. Nothing I could do. Um, you know, they hung in there and they came in tonight and, and delivered and it was fun tonight. As those guys kept coming out from the prelims, I kept having <coughs> guys come over to, to my room after the, after the prelims and it was just, the prelims were awesome tonight. These, these guys came in from Strike Force and, and they really did a great job tonight. I'm happy for them. Life is going to be a lot different for these guys now. <laughs> yeah, and I was wondering how close you were to giving Tyron the knockout of the night bonus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it, it, um, the... Uh, yeah, big foot fucked him. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so I'm going to pick the mic to, to, to Lance Palmer after. Thanks. Just real quick, Dana, would you say that Antonio is the favorite to get the fight against Kane? And Antonio, from your perspective, uh, would it be a better fight this time around against Kane? Yeah, like I said, right here, right now, I don't like to make fights or, or say what I'm going to do next, but... Um, I wouldn't be opposed to, to, to giving him a fight. He went in there and, and he knocked out. They called that a TKO. That was a knockout. He knocked out Alistar Overeem and uh, he looked great doing it. So we'll see what happens. Dana, uh, oh, wait. Let him, he had a question too. Man, I don't know. Now I'll be back to my home. Uh, still with my family. No, in two weeks I'll be back to train. And uh, I just want to fight the best. And uh, the best heavyweights are here in UFC. If uh, Turner, Joe Silva, UFC want to give another opportunity to fight Ken Velasco, it will be a pleasure. He's a big champion. He's a tough guy. He's a very great guy. And uh, I just want to fight the best guys. And uh, I want to fight who UFC want and who better for, for the show for UFC. Dana, despite the fact that you don't like making matches right now, I mean, there were some meaningful fights tonight. Uh, Rashad Evans losing. Does, does that open the door? Is Chris Weidman the only guy left now? I would have to say yes. I mean, I, I liked it. going into this fight anyway. We wanted to wait. We wanted to see what happens. And, you know, I liked Weidman for this fight anyway. Um, so, yeah. And Rashad looked worse than I've ever seen him tonight. He looked terrible. Have you talked to Anderson about that at all? His camp, I know, you know, it's in town. Have you, have you approached him about that fight yet? Or? No, you know, it's always a process in, in dealing with Anderson and getting him his next fight. I don't mean that in a negative way. It's just I'm used to it. I know I know how this all goes. He, everybody thinks that he's ducking. I don't know why he does this. He makes it look like he doesn't want to fight Weidman. Believe me right here, right now, when I tell you, Anderson Silva does not care who he fights. Whoever we end up coming up with him to fight, he will fight. There's, there's never been a situation where I've been with Anderson Silva where he's said, there's, I will absolutely not fight this guy. So, yeah, the answer, my long-winded answer to your question is yes. And, and one other, a lot of talk right now is Joseph Benavidez, you know, been at the top recently, but with his performance right now, could he be in line for a title shot again? Is it, is it too soon? What do you I think? don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what he wants to do. And for Tyron, if I could, please, Tyron, uh, obviously, uh, incredible debut for you this evening. Can you talk about the feeling of, of going out and doing what you did? Um, it just felt really good to make a statement. You know, um, he's been in there the whole time. You know, and a lot of people don't realize at the beginning of my career, I finished everybody. So for me, it's, it's a new new league turned over. It's a new organization. And uh, I wanted to send a message all the way to what's going on here. So look at quickly now that uh, now the champ is here. Obviously, congratulations to Jose. Uh, can, you, can you talk about his game plan coming in? It seemed like the leg kicks weren't part of the plan to start with, then he went to it, then he went away from it. What was the game plan and how did it play out versus expectations? Então, era assim, a gente tinha que chutar para minar a perna dele, para justamente ele parar de se movimentar, né? Então, eu fui chutando ali com, com o passar do tempo, mas uma hora a gente percebeu que ele estava esperando o chute para botar para baixo. Então, eu administrei mais na, na parte da mão mesmo, no boxe. 
Yeah, the plan was to kick him and, and kick, keep him from moving a little bit, but I, I started to see that he was checking my kicks and he was maybe going for the takedown once I kicked, so I used my hands a little bit more. Yeah, uh, I want to ask you, uh, what are your thoughts about the uh, little knock fight against uh, Rashad, and where this uh, win puts him in the division right now? It was a big win for him, beating Rashad Evans. You know, it's, it's a big win. Rashad Evans has lost to Machida and Jones. That's it. And, and little knock went in there and won tonight, and uh, it puts him in a very good position. And I have a question for Aldo. I'm going to ask him for two minutes. Aldo, I'd like to know if you thought that this fight, if you imagined in a moment that this fight would be so difficult, and that everyone would say that he could reach the fourth or fifth round with advantage, if you had imagined that it would be this way. Of course, he's a big champion. He showed his weight very low, so I trained a lot to make 10 rounds. But I was suffering in the academy, waiting for this fight. Essa luta, né? Então eu fiquei muito feliz quando colocaram o Frank Edge, sabendo que é um cara super campeão, né? Só fez grandes lutas, grandes lutadores. Então é assim que eu quero ser lembrado, eu quero lutar com os melhores sempre. E sempre vou estar bem preparado a fazer se 5, 8, 10, quantos rounds for preciso, eu vou fazer. Só vou fazer mais uma pergunta aí, gente. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question was if he believed the start was going to be as difficult, and there's a lot of people saying in the fourth and fifth round it would get more difficult for Jose, and he said, yeah. Um, you know, Frankie was a great champion. Uh, he was ready to go and fight eight or ten rounds if needed, but he knew Frankie was a great champion coming into this fight. He had a lot of time to train, and he was very happy when uh, he got the chance to fight him. Então, agora não é não é comigo. Acho que que é o Tio Silva, né? Não se eles quiserem. Mentais na cabeça assim, eu aceito. Sim, eu acho que eu estou disposto a lutar com os melhores. Eu treino, respeito a todos. Mas eu estou muito feliz de estar ali dentro, então quem eles colocarem para mim, eu vou aceitar o maior prazer. A pergunta era se ele está pensando em mudar para a classe de classe. Ele disse que isso é para o Dana e o Joe Silva. Ele está disposto a lutar com qualquer um, ele treina com qualquer um, então quem eles colocarem para mim. Você quer continuar? Você sabe, vamos ver o que acontece. Eu acho que algo interessante aconteceu. Há 10 minutos atrás, alguém me disse que eu quero lutar com ele muito bem. Você está falando? Eu quero falar com eles e falar com eles. My question is for both Bigfoot and Lil Nam. Um, both of you guys during this week were kind of, uh, there was a lot of talk about uh, your opponents getting fights after they beat you guys. Uh, can you talk about that situation and did that motivate you even more uh, tonight? Muita gente estava falando durante a semana de, das lutas que os seus adversários teriam depois de vencer essas lutas. O que vocês acham disso agora? Então, so, uh, I think that would be that thing would be a lot because I, I know before he fight against Anderson Silva, he had a big fight against me, you know. So I think we prepared a lot uh, my wrestling skills, my my box. I know what was very prepared. Many people uh, don't believe in my job, and uh, but I believe me, you no, know, and uh, I just I don't respect me so much, and uh, I work too hard <laughs> my striking for this fight with uh, Catel Cubes. He's uh, the best coach uh, striking from Brazil. And, uh, I show for the world the guys are wrong about me and uh, I show specific to Overeem and uh, I show how he gonna respect the, the other fight. And, and Bigfoot, can you put this fight in perspective for you, uh, for your career? You've had another big fight uh, in the past that was uh, a high profile fight, a big win for you against um, uh, Fedor. And can you put this fight, this win, considering the lack of respect you received, and can you put it uh, in perspective as far as your career is? 
Bota essa luta em perspectiva na tua carreira. Você teve uma outra grande luta que foi com o Fedor e agora essa luta você disse que as pessoas não respeitavam. Bota essa... Diz como é que é essa na tua carreira. Yeah, these fights are very important to my professional life, you know. The first fight with the Fedor, many people uh, don't believe in my job. And now the same thing, I like this situation, I like the underdog, you know, because I'm trained too much. And uh, many people uh, think that I was in my home uh, drink soda, watch movie and, and eat popcorn. But no, I'm trying hard. I'm trying Saturday, Sunday, you know, I'm trying uh, Christmas, New, uh, New Year, and uh, I'm, I give my blood for this fight, and uh, I give up for other fights too. I have a question for a Bigfoot. Bigfoot, now that your fight with Obering is over, um, are you gonna? Are you planning on returning back to the Black Pavilions? No. I train in the best teams in the world, you no, know, the Chino Guerra in Rio de Janeiro, with uh, Rogério, Rodrigo, Feijão, you know, and uh, when I'm here in the USA, I train in the America Top Team, the best team of the Florida, and uh, I have a good camp all the time, and uh, I don't have, uh, I don't want to go to Black Zilla. Black Zilla is just business, you know, and I don't have a lot of it with the guys. And uh, I want to train when I uh, have a lot of friends, true friends. And uh, in HT and Chino Gera, I have a true friend. And another question for Damien. Damien, uh, are you willing to, right here, are you willing to disclose what your plan B was for Fitch if the plan A didn't work? Uh, yeah, the last year I wasn't able to to grapple with him, you know, of course it was to strike, but there are some specific things that we are we are doing in the striking games, in the striking game that I was training specifically for, for him. Joe, just a couple of quick ones for you. Um, pretty satisfied with the win? What, what were your thoughts on the fight? Yeah, I'm happy with it. You know, anytime you go out and be, you know, a tough guy, a top contender like Ian McCall, I mean, you got to be happy. You know, I went out there. I really actually started feeling uh, a lot better in the third, and, and when the fight ended, I was like, dang, you know, this is a fun fight. It was a great opponent, and I uh, wish we could go a few more. So I was really starting to feel in the third, and uh, yeah, I had fun out there. It was good to, it was good to be back in there. I, I felt super composed, and, you know, I'm tough with the win. I mean, <laughs> I went out there and hit him with all I had, and, and you know, gave him all I had, and, and he took it. So, you know, it was nice, and you know, it's always great to go out there and get the knockout. I know I rocked him early, but, you know, I grow more as a fighter, you know, going those second rounds and the, and the, and the third rounds, and, uh, and I get better, and that's, that's what I'm trying to do. So, uh, you know, it's perfect, man. I'm happy with the way things went. And you had said before the fight that you were actually um, leaning towards wanting a couple of fights in between your next title shot. Now that the fight is over, you know how it went, you got the win. Do you still feel that way, or would you? like to kind of make a case for a title shot right now? Well, I'm not going to beg for a title shot. I'm not going to ask for one. And I wouldn't mind, of course, like I just said, you know, just improving. You know, Mighty Mouse uh, went out there last time and beat me. He's beat everyone in the division, the top three guys. So, you know, I would just like to get better. But, you know, give me a title shot, and I'm going to do everything in my power to go in there and take that as well. So, I mean, either way is good for me. But like I said, I'm, uh, I'm continuing to improve uh in, in the fight this three round you know fight with such a tough guy like uncle creepy was uh was awesome for me uh dana back here just uh if you can give us uh, your thoughts on, on jose aldo now that he's defeated frankie uh on record how does he match up or in, in terms of the pound for pound list because we always talk about frankie Edgar, right. the guys up there no i agree he's one of the best pound for pound i mean uh, again off the top of my head the list i mean He's up there. He's, he's one of the top guys in the world. Uh, I, I call this a super fight between two of the pound-for-pound pound best in the world in their prime. And Jose Aldo won the fight. It's, he, uh, he is definitely one of the you know, top four or five best pound-for-pound pound fighters in the world. I have a question for Frankie, obviously. Uh, Frankie, if, if you search online, talk to everybody in this room. People are wary back and forth as to who won the fight. Can you tell me your thoughts uh, on how that fight went down and what's going, on, what's going through your mind right now? Uh, you know, Jose is a champion. That's pretty much the bottom line. You know, I don't want to be talking about, do you think you won this and that, scored the rounds, it doesn't matter. He, he left with the belt and he's a champion. He's everyone.
Uh, Dana, uh, regarding uh, Damien, I know that the welterweight division, you know, a lot of key fights are happening next month in Montreal. Right. But where do you think that he stands right now after this win? Because, I mean, you know, he dominated a guy who no one's really dominated like that before. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> again, like I was talking about with Sean Evans, if you look at Fitch, let me think, off the top of my head, George St. Pierre and uh, Hendricks, and Hendricks yeah. you know? So, yeah, it's a good win for, you know, for... for for Fitch, it's, it's, he's lost two of his last three, but he's a tough guy. And the perfect way to describe this fight was he outfitched Fitch. It's exactly, I mean, I said the same thing, and that's what everybody else was saying. And after this tournament happens up in Montreal, you know, he will fall right in there somewhere with one of these guys. And we'll do a fight. I see him becoming a number one contender pretty quick. <clears throat> and for Frankie, I mean, do you. When, when you look at this fight, I mean, is there anything that you came out of the fight as far as um, surprises or with, 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 with Jose, or um, was it what you expected? Yeah, you know, uh, I felt I was uh, prepared in all areas, you know. Um, he's, he's one of the top pound pounds, or what Dan just said, and uh, yeah, I mean, he brought everything. Frankie, now that it's over and you had the fight at 145, do you feel better as a featherweight or do you like how you feel as a fighter fighting at lightweight? Uh, the fight kind of keeps, keeps on going the same way wherever I'm at, you know. Um, get a little beat up and I have to these close fights, so uh, I don't know if it matters, to be honest with you. As far as your skills out there, I mean, do you yeah, feel I mean, you I, like I, I match up well with guys at 55 and, 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 and at 45, you know. Do you think you'll stick around at 145 now? Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, man, to be honest with you. It's just too soon. Thanks. Frankie, uh, and how did you change the flow of the fight there where he was really kind of taking your part with the leg, legs early and then you seemed to take that away from him? What was the key to taking that away? I just think I turned the pace around. You know, I tried to back him up as much as I can and just, uh, uh, you know, push the pace. It's always a tough thing, uh, to, you know, to like look back on it. But you, you've always been a slow starter in these fights. You know, here you had the momentum going three, four, or five. Is there, you know, what do you think about about those slow starts? And you know, I know you, I'm sure you've talked about it in practice. You know, what do you do to get yourself in the fights earlier? Yeah, I don't know. I guess this is something we're gonna have to figure out soon. Yeah. Friday. What's up, man? Hey, uh, you started. This is your first fight at featherweight, and I want to know how did you feel in the early rounds, and did you feel, uh, did you have to, was your body adjusting as you went along, or were you comfortable from the very beginning? I felt like I do a 55, you know, I didn't feel any different. Everything was the same to me as, as far as that goes. He seemed very fast early on. Was his speed something that you had to adjust to, or were you okay with it? Uh, yeah, you know, I was fairly okay with it. Uh, it we knew he was going to be fast. Um, you know, probably, probably being one of the fastest guys I, I, I fought, so uh, that's something we expected. Did you, was there anything different about being at featherweight as opposed to being at lightweight, being that you had to cut the weight? Uh, I mean, no, not really, you know. Um, maybe maybe uh, I didn't get backed up as much with the, the bigger punches. You know, I, I, I really didn't see the fight, so. I'm Squirrel with the uh, MMA Nets. First question for uh, Bigfoot. Did you get a chance to speak to Orim after the fight? And if so, was it more respectful? <coughs> yes, after my card. He's my friend now. Looks <laughs> 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 like you still want to fight up there moving. Um, Dana just mentioned uh, Shosh Hamlet. Is, is that a fight that you look forward to? Você está se mexendo aí, parece que ainda quer lutar. O Dana falou do Anthony Pérez, é uma luta de interesse. Ah, depende do Dana. Eu acho que isso, para mim, eu já falei, eu respeito todos, eu treino para lutar com os melhores. Se ele colocar, não posso fazer nada, sou funcionário, eu o patrão. Acho que isso aí é uma luta boa, mas eu acho que para mim chegar no Pérez, eu acho que eu tenho que caminhar fazendo um longo caminho. Eu acho que já está batendo na porta do cinturão, então. Respeito, mas se eles colocaram, eu tenho que lutar. Yeah, like I said, it's up to Dana, but I mean, uh, that is an interesting fight. I train to fight the best, I respect them all. I think to fight uh, Pettis, he's almost there at the title shot in his own division, but it would be an interesting fight. And lastly, for Tyron Wendy, that was a big statement tonight. Um, coming in from Showtime, this one of the best former champ. Is there anyone out there that you want next? 
That's a ton of guys. They all fought on March 16th, so I'll be sitting there waiting. Um, you know, I was only in there for 30 some seconds today, so I'm still fresh. I'll continue to train, and you know, God forbid, you know, I never wish any um, injury upon anyone. But uh, March 16th, uh, my passport is valid. So it's going to fall. <laughs> Awesome, Dana. Um, today, Peter Belfort said he wants John Jones in again. Uh, what's your comment on that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm, not, I'm not making any fights. <laughs> I have a question for Dana. Um, I'd like to know if you consider a JDS over in fight right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think that you know <clears throat> we were just talking about who's next for uh, for Cain Velasquez. That that's a tougher question than than uh, you know who's next. Have, there's a lot of interesting fights to make in the heavyweight division. Uh, who fights Cain next is the toughest. That's why I say when I tell you guys I don't make fight, I definitely don't when a guy just comes out. But I wouldn't be opposed to giving him the fight after what he just did. And uh, you know, question was asked of Marota. I mean, this guy has beat some tough guys. So. Sim. Tenho alguma pergunta em português para o se puder traduzir. É, Aldo, eu queria saber se na sua opinião a luta também foi tão parelha, tão disputada assim como você acha, como você avaliou, quais rounds você acha que você realmente ganhou? Então, para mim a luta sempre foi parelha pelo fato de eu não conseguir o um nocaute, né? Então o Frank tá vindo para cima, mas para mim, eu, eu, se eu perdi, eu perdi um minuto do quarto round. Então, eu acho que ganhei todos os rounds. Eu, Fui muito mais contundente do que ele, então eu conectei muito mais golpes, chutes e defendi bem a, as entradas de perna dele. A pergunta era, com todas as conversas sobre ser tão perto de um fight, o que ele falou? Como ele avaliou as rounds? Ele disse que ele sentiu que ele ganhou cada round, excepto talvez um minuto antes do quarto round. Ele conectou muito mais punches, muito mais strikes, ele defendeu os takedowns. Frank, ele sempre vinha para frente, mas ele sentiu que ele ganhou os rounds. Vamos fazer um pouco mais de perguntas. Matemática o Frank é um, foi o campeão do peso leve, então ele tem o seu valor. Mas para mim, o Ryan Fave é o mais duro que eu já enfrentei. A pergunta foi, é o uh, Frank o maior oponente que você enfrentou? E o Aldo disse que ele respeita todos os seus oponentes. E ele foi muito difícil, mas o maior de hoje foi o uh, Uriah, que é um cara que lutou com as mãos quebradas e é um cara que ele enfrentou de novo. Ele acha que vai ser uma luta difícil, então o Uriah é o maior de hoje. Vamos ter uma pergunta. If anybody has one more question. No? Thank you very much. Have a great night. Appreciate it. <clears throat>